I'm Mo Rocca, and I'm excited to announce season four of my podcast, Mobituaries. I've got a whole new bunch of stories to share with you about the most fascinating people and things who are no longer with us. From famous figures who died on the very same day to the things I wish would die, like buffets, all that and much more. Listen to Mobituaries with Mo Rocca wherever you get your podcasts. It's so good to be right. Hey, everybody, it's Kelly Wilkness here with Anita Joyce, and this is Decorating Tips and Tricks. Today, we're talking about making all the right choices, and it's the kitchen edition. Chances are, at some point in some place, you will renovate or design a new kitchen. And today, we're going to give you all you need to know to make the right choices on all the critical decisions that go into that process. Now, how many kitchens do you have under your belt, Anita? What does that mean? <laughs> No comment. <laughs> <laughs> it is a strange thing, is it? Well, how many kitchens have you either uh, renovated or designed from scratch? Oh, um, really just... I didn't know this was going to be a stumper. I wouldn't have started out. Well, I mean, it depends on how, you, you know, how much of a renovation it was. I would say two, really. Well, no, that, I take that back. Three. Okay, three. And I'm working on my fourth right now. So there you go. For me, I've got five to date. And personally, five, and then many for clients. So we have a lot of experience in doing this, and it is really critical to make the right choices on the bigger ticket items and the items you're going to be interfacing with every single day. Today, we're not going to be talking about the layout of your kitchen. So not that that essential triangle, because everybody's kitchen is different. Uh, today, we're talking about giving you information, things to think about, and pointing you in the direction so you can make the right choices when you're outfitting the kitchen. So let's kick off with the cabinetry. Right. So there's basically three kinds. There's stock, semi-custom, and custom cabinets. So if you have a very limited budget, then you're probably going to want to go with stock which means it probably literally is in stock, but there's going to be very few options and it's going to be the most basic uh, cabinetry available. So there's there's not going to be a lot of options or color choices. So if you are looking for mo more color choices, you have a bigger budget, then you can go with the semi-custom. So there's a lot more options in the semi-custom, but there are only so many colors, for example, that you can choose from. But if you go to fully custom, then you can typically go with whatever color you want and whatever design you want. Yes. And I've seen some really nice Ikea kitchens. So don't turn your nose up to the off the shelf. It is a place where you're going to want to spend some money, but I think you can do pretty well with some nicely made off the shelf. And semi-custom's great too. But if you have the budget, I would go fully custom. And then you're going to be talking about what are you really seeing as far as the cabinetry? Well, you know, the face is obviously what you're going to be looking at all the time when you go into your kitchen. My suggestion is in order to make the right choice there, keep it simple. Don't get too fanciful with the profile of it. I say don't go rounded. Don't do something that's going to really set it in a certain time. Shaker is so simple. I would say, oh, I don't like shaker. I don't like shaker furniture. But the idea of a shaker cabinet front is that it's just very simple. It's basically the front and then it's framed out. A mitered frame goes around it. I think I've talked before about the fact that I went with this extra little profile on my <laughs> shaker front and I wish I hadn't because it mm -hmm. really isn't doing anything to create an extra wow in my kitchen and it is really challenging to clean because dust, we leave the door open, you know, the outside LA dust comes in or just, you know, people drip something and you've really, I've got to go with a Q-tip to get it out of there. So think <laughs> about that because that was a mistake that I made. That was not the right choice. Going 
pretty much shaker was the right choice, but that extra little profile, that extra little bevel really is creating a problem for me. So do something that's easy to wipe clean. Some glass front is a great idea if you are going to display things and it's probably going to cost you a little bit more, but it can be worth it to have that type of focal point like Anita's got going on in her kitchen. I don't have glass in this kitchen. I did have it in the kitchen before, but I felt it was just going to be too much with the vintage stove and whatnot. So Make that decision taking into account everything you're going to have in the kitchen and also know thyself. If you're going to be stuffing the Tupperware in there, don't have glass cabinets. Absolutely. I want to go back to the shaker cabinets. That's what I have. And I think it is really one of the best choices. That is what I see in Houston. They're all shaker cabinets and typically white. Uh, Mm -hmm. They do sometimes have other colors, but that seems to be the absolute most popular color here. And I think that's going to be the most popular color to appeal to another buyer. But again, if you're just like, I can't stand white, I need color, add the color. I mean, there's nothing wrong with color. It just might not appeal to certain buyers. And, you know, you talk about the adding that trim and maybe something you wish you hadn't done. I'm not sorry I put the glass cabinets because almost all of my upper cabinets in my kitchen are glass. But I do, and I love dishes, but it's what you said. Because they're the display, I can't put just anything in those cabinets. And in a way, they're mostly decorative because some of the stuff in there isn't stuff I actually use. But the stuff I use, some of the stuff is not going to, you know, I can't put, like you said, uh, yeah, storage containers in there, right. that sort of thing. Uh, so you, you are limited there. But so just really think through if you want those glass cabinets. And if you're going to do the glass cabinets, then it's a great idea to have some lighting in there. And that's something you have to think of beforehand. So if that is the right choice for you, if you can live with having cabinets for display and you have other places to have actual storage, then when you're making your electrical plan or when you're tweaking the plan that's already in an existing kitchen, make sure that you have uh, some wiring in the cabinetry so you can have some lights come through it. And then of course, you want to have glass shelves in those if you're doing the lighting. So the lighting comes all the way through. Another alternative to the glass front is some sort of mesh. Now I did that in my small office downstairs. I got this fantastic metal uh, mesh and it's a close mesh. It's not like a chicken wire or anything like that. It's really pretty. It's actually more like punched out. I wouldn't even call it a mesh, so to speak. And I put that inside a shaker frame and it's beautiful and it's gold and it just looks really great. The cabinets are painted charcoal, that Kendall charcoal that we love. It's really sharp. So that's something if you want to shake it up from just having wood front cabinets in some areas in your kitchen and you're not really ready to go glass, think about something like that. Now, another thing we want to talk about, it's We talked about the face, so really what the style is of the cabinet. But then there's a way that it sits on the cabinetry box. So there's partial overlay, there's full overlay, and then there's the inset, which is more of a European style. I have the inset now. So you don't see the hinge hardware or anything like that. And it's flush with the um, actual box of the cabinetry. I really like that the best. It's probably going to cost you a little bit more. It does cost more. Right. (laughs) Almost everything I like costs more. (laughs) You know, I didn't like the, the, that you saw the black as the space between the cabinets and uh, the drawers. See, See, I didn't like that. So Mm -hmm. I, mine is an overlay. It covers it, but you don't see the hinges at all on mine. Right. They're hidden. Right. Right. So yeah, it was slightly cheaper than what I did. But, you know, the other thing to think about talking about the cabinet fronts is refacing your cabinets versus replacing them. You know, if your cabinetry is in great condition uh, behind the doors and you're not changing the configuration at all in your kitchen, you can just reface them. And uh, based on, you know, my conversations with a cabinetry company that I've been working with, uh, you're going to save about 20%. It seems like it should be more than that. It does seem like it should be more than that. Doesn't it? Yeah. I know. So there is some savings, but, uh, you know, it's not big. But then, you know, you have the hassle of having everything ripped out. 
And so, you know, I guess that's also, um, you know, some expense there. Yeah, that's and, worthwhile. I mean, you, mm-hmm. and because sometimes when you take something off the wall, you just know not you're opening up a can of worms you didn't know you were going to open. But that's well, but a great you're, point. Mm-hmm. But then if you have to replace, right, but then you're really, if you say, well, I like my countertop on my backsplash, you, you're going to have to just reface because taking out the cabinets means ripping everything out. Good point. So these might be the right decisions for you when you're, this would be renovating a kitchen. So you you buy a house or you've been living in a house for a while and you're like, okay, it's time. And some people might just think they have to rip everything out. But as Anita points out, if you're happy with the cabinetry, you're even happy with the backsplash and the configuration of the kitchen, the the boxes that actually create the cabinets, they're just wood. Uh, You know, as, as long as they're good inside and they're configured the way you want, there's really no reason to pull them all out and put the same wood boxes back. So now that we're inside the cabinets, you want to think about a couple of things. And we could spend hours. You know we could, Anita. Oh, yes. We could spend hours just talking about cabinetry. Yes. So, And we do have to get on to other things. But just to touch on some things you want to consider so you make the right decision – So you can get the most storage. Pull-out shelving is great if you have some depth and you can get it. And that allows you to use the full depth of the cabinetry. And deep drawers is something that is kind of new-ish. People didn't always have that. To have a drawer that maybe you would be putting dishes in or even some people can put glassware in there. That also would allow you to have less upper cabinets if that's something you're interested in in case you wanted to put in a fuller bank of windows or something like that so consider some deep drawers that are under the counter oh i absolutely prefer the drawers versus doors because it is so much easier to get the things in the back so Mm -hmm. i absolutely would go with as many drawers as possible and i do store most of my dishes in the drawers because as i said the upper cabinets tended to be display (laughs) mainly Right, right. But that's a great option. Mm -hmm. And it's easier, you know, if someone's short, I'm not talking about anyone in particular, like myself, but if anyone's, you know, under 5'5", it might be easier for them, especially if you're taking platters and stuff. I'm always pulling a um, little step stool around my kitchen, which is probably not the safest thing. Uh, One other thing I wanted to talk about before we go on to the countertops, which I believe we're going to address next, is paint or stain. So if you are doing custom or semi-custom and you have an opportunity to then choose what you're going to put on there. You know, we're seeing some stained wood cabinetry come back this year and, you know, may that may end up being around for a while. Here's the thing. If you think at some point you you're interested in the stain. Well, you can't really go back from painting unless you True. strip it all off. True. But you could go stain and paint over it. So when you're thinking about the cabinet drawers, be sure and get the soft close drawers. Your life is going to be so much more pleasant to have those. So the kids aren't slamming them shut, uh, especially if you have uh, kids like I do that like to go down to the kitchen in the middle of the night. I don't want to hear those slamming shut. Oh, yeah. And I have it on the cabinet doors and drawers. And there's one, for whatever reason, my cabinet guy did not put the soft close on and it drives me nuts. So I have to, I have one in my little toolbox. I need to just switch it out because that is really a nice decision to make. And it's not any more expensive. You just make sure you say soft clothes must be. Okay. So let's go on to the countertop. Man, there's lots of options here, right? And Mm. again, back to my research, what I really am seeing the most of is quartz. That seems to be the countertop that is most being put into a kitchens when they're being remodeled and in new builds here in, at least here in Houston. Uh, So the quartz is quartz mixed with a resin binder. It's more resistant to staining than an unsealed marble. So I, I can see why people do use the quartz, but I am hearing about some reports of it cracking underneath very hot things like air fryers. Have you been, the hot air fryers, have you been hearing that? I have not been heard. There's a lot of it going on in the news lately. I haven't heard that particular topic brought up, but I do know you're not supposed to put really hot stuff on courts. Yeah. So, I mean, you're going to have to be careful. So anyway, there's been some problems with people getting cracked. I mean, what a horror that would be. 
in the countertop world, you've got quartz, as Anita has mentioned, you've got laminate, you've got butcher block, you've got concrete, you've got soapstone, you've got marble, and you've, of course, got some granite. And I do agree. And stainless steel. And stainless steel. I don't like that much, but yes, (laughs) do have stainless steel. But I do believe that Anita is correct in saying that quartz and there's also a quartz site. You might hear that term thrown around. Those are the countertops that are used the most. They're really durable. They do you can't... see quartzite much? Because I really I have quartzite in our mm-hmm. garage apartment. I never mm-hmm. see that anywhere. That's a fully natural material. There's no resin in it. Right. Yeah, so... I do see. Yeah, I do see it. I mean, you we, do see it. Okay. I, think I don't about... see it here. Yeah, I think, you know, the naturals, I and mean, if people are a little skittish of marble, they might go with the quartzite. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, quartz is great. It's a composite. So you might have heard companies like Cambria, Style Stone. There's a bunch of companies doing that. And you can get a really good looking, uh, air quotes, natural look to a quartz. So I think that it is a really solid choice. Then you're going to want to consider your edge. So if your fabricator is coming in, they're going to say, what kind of edge do you want? Well, you can look online and you can see the profiles. There's simple miter, which is just going to kind of, kind of edge it off squared. You could have a bevel. You could have a rounded bull nose. You could have an OG waterfall, which has an extra little, little woof to the profile. It's really beautiful. You might want to consider something rounded on edges. It's particularly if you've got little kids, you don't want somebody bonking their head into some quartzite or quartz as they're coming around the the corner. But I would say in order to make the right choice for this countertop, you should consider your budget, of course, but this is some place where you're going to want to put some money in. We talked about this in our Save and Splurge episode that came out pretty recently, and we can link to that here. This is a place to splurge because... You're going to see this every day. It's a horizontal surface. It's not like a cabinet that you could paint over and change a different color. Once it's there, it is there and it's expensive to change. So if you've got some dollars you're thinking about putting into fancy hardware or something else, I would seriously consider putting a little bit more of the budget into the countertop and getting something at the quartz level, either quartz or natural stone. Well, that's right. And, you know, granite, we hear it's fallen out of favor, but there really are some granites that are still in style. The ones that have a lot of different color variations in them, the browns, the kind of orangey ones are not so popular anymore. But there's the solid, some that are kind of more solid black, Mm -hmm. I would say. And then, you know, I have a white granite that I still like. And, you know, it really granite holds up to the heat and it doesn't easily scratch. So it's still a great natural material if you can find one that looks good. Uh, But yeah, the butcher block, boy, it does get scratched and you do have to be careful about that. Concrete, if your house is settling, that can crack. So that's not fun. I I like soapstone. That's something that's very very um, resilient to a lot of issues. So I think that's another great choice. If anyone's unfamiliar with a soapstone, that's the dark, it almost feels like like a Mm slate-ish. We would, yeah, we would advise you for sure that the right choice would be to go with a lighter neutral. Now, definitely the most popular right now is a white. I like the black too. I like the soapstone. I don't think that you can go wrong with a soapstone or with a gray. I've seen a beautiful gray that, that's been used, which is probably quartz. Well, and then the other thing I would mention is you were talking about the edges. A- another thing that, you know, I just see in all the high-end homes, it's just a very simple edge. It's just a straight edge. It's not It's not the waterfall. The o- There's no curve. It's just straight. Yeah, that's what I have too. Mm-hmm. And I that's think what that, I have. Yeah, I think that is a great now, way to go. Now, you can go a double width. So that it looks like I have that too. Yeah. yeah, Well, I have it on my island. Yeah. So, I mean, that's something you can do. And really, it's just an edge. It's not really the double width of the, uh, of the countertop. Yeah. I was actually under the edge of my countertop when I was getting ready for this episode. Look, it was like, I'm like, I didn't pay for this to go all the way to the wall. Did I? (laughs) No, you don't. It just, it just comes under it. So it kind of lips it on the bottom. If you can imagine what we're saying here. So let's go to the backsplash. We have talked about backsplash a lot. Um, So we're just going to touch on that a little bit today because we want to just point you in the right direction, of course. 
And the right direction, we believe, and I don't want to speak for you, Anita, so if you changed your mind on this, let us know. But simple (laughs) is the way to go. Simple tile can be even just a simple subway, but you could put it in a basket weave or on the diagonal or vertical, or you could go with a straight up horizontal. Um, But I think that that's a place where you can, that simplicity should reign. You can probably save some money. But with that said, if you really love your countertop and you really want to go simple, you could just run the countertop up on the horizontal as well. Mm -hmm. I think that's a great choice. I absolutely agree with you. I think the simplest is best. Avoid pattern. And I see, like I said, houses for sale and they have wild backsplashes and eventually those get marked down. So regrettable. Oh, (laughs) and it was just such a simple choice. Just go simple. You didn't have to go all fancy there. And you're just not going to get as tired of it. It's not going to go out of style so quickly. It's just better. Just go with the simple tile or, like you said, your countertop uh, material up the backsplash. I've seen a mirror. I've seen it done well once. I've seen it done well once. Once. Yeah. Uh, The other times it was not, it did not look good. I think that would not be a good choice. And I don't think I'd want to come down in the morning and making my tea looking at myself. Actually, the one where it was done well was just behind the stove and everywhere else it was not. Yeah. But yeah, most of the time, I think it's not a good choice at all. Yeah. And minimize the grout. I think that is the right yes. choice for your backsplash. So, and, and it's important to get the grout right. This is not an afterthought. And I really makes me angry when this happens to people. It's a, like that happens with the paint color too. The painter's like, oh, I got a cancellation. I'm coming tomorrow. I need your paint color by 5 p.m. today. They do th- this with the grout too. The tile people do this. They're telling you, oh, oh, you spent all this time picking out your tile and then They treat the grout like it's an afterthought. The grout is essential. (laughs) It's almost as important. And if you make the wrong choice, it would be such a blight on your your backsplash or any place else. So get yourself a grout kit. If you're in the business of renovating or creating a kitchen, it's worth to invest in a grout kit. It'll be this long rectangular uh, plastic holder and it'll have all the different little grouts with their color in there. And you can hold them up next to your tile and you can see what you think. You can show it to the person who's going to create it and you can get the right color. Because if you do something that's wrong, it's, it's really devastating. Right. And the tile store should have those. So you don't have to buy the kit. Um, you know, well, you can just it's true, but I like to see the color in the room it's going to be in ah, because well, lighting is so different. That you know, if you're true. in a tile store with no natural light and your kitchen is, is just blazing mm-hmm. with natural light, it's going to look mm-hmm. different. Well, and uh, what you're saying is so correct. Different grouts are going to give it a very different look. If you're going to go with a contrasting grout, it's going to look completely different than if you go with a grout that's basically the same color as the tile. Yep. Hey, we'll be right back with the rest of the show, but keep listening so we can continue bringing you DTT. Green Chef is a delicious delight any time of year, but especially during the holidays. What a wonderful vision to behold of the Green Chef boxes on your doorstep. Green Chef is the number one meal kit for eating well. And it makes eating well so easy with plans to fit every lifestyle, whether you're keto, paleo, vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free, or just looking to eat a more balanced diet. So let Green Chef take the work out of eating clean this holiday season. And if you've got guests coming, shop Green Bundles. They're now available at the Green Market. It's your one-stop shop for nutritious grab-and-go breakfasts, including vegan options, brunch kits, wholesome lunches, ready-to-eat snacks, veggie sides, and more. You can feel your best this December and do your best with Green Chef because they offset 100% of the delivery emissions as well as 100% of the plastic in every box. Go to greenchef.com slash 60DTT and use the code 60DTT and get 60% off plus 20% off your next two months. Greenchef.com slash 60 DTT and use the code 6060DTT to get 60% off plus 20% off your next two months. BritBox just keeps getting better. The new Archie is amazing. 
And it's not the comics. It's about Cary Grant. Archie is the brand new limited series starring Jason Isaacs as Archie Leach, the man who became Cary Grant. From the award-winning screenwriter of Philomena, Archie tells Grant's born in Britain, made in Hollywood story. The dramatic grit to glamour transformation that led him to become one of the most famous people in the world. You are going to absolutely love the acting, but also the styling, the outfits, the scenery. It's the first time his story has been told in collaboration with his daughter Jennifer Grant and ex-wife Diane Cannon. The performances from Jason Isaacs and the rest of the cast are amazing. And it's only available on BritBox. So sign up for BritBox today to stream Archie and other fan favorites from any device. And we have a special limited time offer for our U.S. and Canadian listeners. Get 50% off. Yes, that's 50% off your first month when you sign up for a monthly plan. But only if you go to BritBox.com and use our promotion code DTT at checkout. You're going to love Archie. So head over right now and get 50% off your first month of BritBox. Use the promotion code DTT at BritBox.com. You want to move on to appliances? Yeah. Well, and I wanted to talk about the microwave placement. Ooh, all righty. Because this seems to be, you know what I think about with the microwave? I think about the TV over the fireplace. (laughs) You know, it's, that's a great analogy. Yes. No designer really wants it over the fireplace, but often you have the fireplace as the focal point, you have the TV as the focal point, and often it just works best to have them in the same place, even though no designer really likes that. And I think the same thing ha- happens often with the kitchen. No designer likes the microwave above the stove, but if that's what your vent is, then it just has to go there. Mm. So, but if you can avoid it, I would really like to see that microwave somewhere else. I think it's going to look better to have a vent hood over there and have the microwave in your island or just in the wall somewhere. If you can do that. If not, well, you know, there you have it. Agreed. That would be the preferred choice for sure. I'm working with some clients now and we're reconfiguring their existing footprint too give the kitchen a lot more space and they have the microwave over their range. And even for for safety purposes, I don't like the idea of anybody leaning over a gas range to grab soup or a stew out of the microwave. It's really oh, unsafe. Good point. So, I mean, these people are not elderly at all, but they are expecting to be in their house for a really long time. They told me they were going to get carted out of there. So I said, well, okay, (laughs) then we should think about these things for sure. And I'm strongly suggesting to them the right choice is a microwave drawer. I love my microwave oh, yes. drawer. Aren't those nice? Yes. So Sharp makes them, a bunch of other companies make them. So that might be the right choice. And now you can get the microwaves that also double as convection ovens. Mm-hmm. Have you seen those? I have. Yes. I think that's a great choice too. I think that is too. I don't really use the microwave, so I but I would use an extra convection oven. Yeah, that's a great idea. Okay, how about talk microwave? How about talking the actual range? Well, I think if you can go gas, I think that is really one of the most popular stoves out there. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, you know, I mean, electric is certainly an option. If you have electric and you want something that's fast, like gas, or even faster, then you can go with the induction. So, I mean, those are some options for you. And then, you know, of course, you can go with the combination stove and oven, you know, in a range, or mm-hmm. you can go with the wall ovens and then just the cooktop. I mean, my personal opinion is I like it all in the range. I like it all together. And, and my preference is the gas. But, you know, work, decide what's going to work best for you. Agreed. And high-end appliances are never going to let you down in reality and never going to let you down upon resale. So this is another place where you might want to put some of your extra budgeting dollars. 36 inches is standard for a range. You really don't have to get that much bigger than that. You don't have to get a 48-inch wolf for it to look great and work great. So there's so many choices now. And I know we mentioned some of those other brands other than the very, very, very expensive French brands that do the colors now. Mm -hmm. They're great. So think about those 
expand your uh, a range ha ha <laughs> expand your range of options for this particular appliance also think about is it going to be built in or can you make it look like it's built in that's going to look a lot better in your kitchen you can go gas electric induction as Anita mentioned induction is this magnetic field so the only area that's going to get hot is the area where you put this um, your pan on and mm-hmm. most uh, brands uh, that make cookware now are making them so they're induction ready as well. Nice. Now, for my money, I would not get a warming drawer. I've had one in the past. I don't really mm-hmm. think they're useful. I didn't find it useful. If I want to heat something up, I'll pop it in the microwave. So think about that. A, a warming drawer might sound, oh yeah, it comes with a warming drawer and this and all that. And you might be paying for things that you really don't need or won't use. And don't poo-poo the wall oven. They're not as popular. But if that just works better in the configuration of your kitchen, you know, give it a second look. They're much better looking now than they have been in the past. Well, and if you need two ovens, but you don't have room for a 48-inch range, then that's the way you can get two ovens is do the wall ovens. Yes, absolutely. If you're doing big Thanksgivings and whatnot. So the fridge, I love the fridge and the dishwasher to be fully integrated. That means they're panel ready. So you're going to pay a little bit more for those uh, to have the panel ready, which seems kind of counterintuitive because you're actually getting less of the appliance, right? In a sense, because it doesn't have the stainless front or the white or black front. But I think that looks really nice and it doesn't interrupt your beautiful cabinetry as you're looking around the kitchen. So really the only appliance that you might see the front of is going to be your your range and maybe a microwave drawer or microwave. So with the fridge, you want to think about the size, uh, where, how the door swings. You might have the regular one door opens to the left or opens to the right. Well, maybe that's not going to work with your kitchen. Maybe it's going to be banging into something. Or they have the, the French configuration where there's two doors split and then there's a bottom drawer, which might be for the freezer or something like that. So look at all of those options and figure out you know, which way you want your fridge door to open, particularly if it's a single door, because that's going to be a pretty wide opening. And also consider the depth of it. Counter depth is 30 inches. I think that would be the right move uh, for mm-hmm. 99% of the kitchen. So yep. you want it to be flush with your cabinetry and look like it's integrated into the whole kitchen. Yeah, I definitely think that's the best if you can fit that in. Um, it's just It's just a better look, but you often need a much larger opening for those unless you want a really small refrigerator oh because they're not as deep is what you're saying exactly Mm -hmm. exactly so another thing to think about is the sink and that's a fight that we've had here divided or not because i have the (laughs) your house is divided on divided or not (laughs) well it kind of is because i'm the only one that likes my uh, apron front ceramic sink you're not alone, Anita. I like that too. And I bet a lot of people listening like well, that. Well, it's not divided. And so I, certain family members that sometimes do the dishes have not liked that. And I said, well, don't you don't fill it up all the way with water. And then when you rinse the dishes, then it just adds more water, you know, t- to, to your sink. But I finally bought a plastic tub, a dishwashing mm-hmm. kind of tub or whatever, mm-hmm. to put in my sink. That's kind of half the size of the sink. And guess what? I now have a divided sink. You are a problem solver. <laughs> and the family rejoices. Oh, but that's anyway, wonderful. Yeah. So, but anyway, that's something to think about is whether you want your sink divided or one size. Do you want it ceramic or stainless? Do you want it drop in, under mount, apron fr- front or oh. no? Oh, you're making me tired thinking of all those choices. And then you could do one sink or two sinks. These are all things to think about. The divided, I think that's really a personal choice. Apron front is still very popular. Undermount, I think definitely if you can, um, that's, you know, that tends to be more expensive and you can't do it with a laminate. But with most of these countertops we're talking about, you can do the undermount and that's definitely a more professional look. Okay. I have to share. I am disappointed in my Shaw farmhouse clay fire sink. 
Really? It, oh, it's so beautiful. And I wanted it it's so badly. And I took money from other areas and I put it into that sink and it chips. The clay fire is, you would think oh it was super God. strong and I'm not alone. There's a whole dark side to these that you don't oh know God. about when you're seeing them on Pinterest and you're like, oh, I have to have it and I have to have that little Shaw insignia and it's wow. just going to be perfect and I'm going to love it. Yes. Yes. So when it chips off, is it white underneath or? It or like is, but oh. if you pour a cup of coffee in it, it discolors it and then you have oh, to be scrubbing it. Goodness. So... Would I ever do one of those again? No. I love a large white sink with an apron front, but there are a lot of other choices out there that are probably more durable. Well, and, ceramic. Yeah. So this is fire clay. So yeah. it's not as strong as some of the wow. others. Yeah. The ceramic, I, I mean, is, is what we have, and it has not chipped anywhere. However, it does. Uh, it, does require a lot of maintenance keeping it white. Yes, but there's a lot I, of scrubbing. I'm I'm down with that. That's okay. And um, my preference would always be a white sink or a stainless sink. Please don't do a color sink. That would not be the right choice. Maybe in a butler's pantry. Maybe in a prep sink. Maybe. Well, How do you feel you, about that? Well, I think uh, I would just keep it the color. If you don't go with white or stainless, I would match the color of the countertop. So if you have a soapstone, then I would go with a black sink. Oh, interesting. Okay. I mean, you can. Let me put it that way. Right. I think the I prefer white, but white. Okay. I think if you got close to it, I think that would work as well. But another thing we didn't talk about are pot fillers. I mean, what's your thought on pot fillers? I kind of think they're dumb. But that's just me. <laughs> you know what I saw on Pinterest? A pot filler for the dog's bowl. Oh, please. Yeah, it was a pull-out cabinet, and then there was the pot filler. And I thought, how much did that cost you? Yeah, I mean, talking about, are you, is that person just spend all day thinking about ways to spend money? That's just so, I, I that's just really, so silly. I was and, really kind of shocked. I thought, how much did that cost? And what else could you have gotten? Because how much effort is it really just to fill up a jar of water and just pour it in the bowl. I that was just crazy. Yeah. No, that's nuts. The pot filler. No, I, that was the thing that everybody. Oh, I want a pot filler. I want a pot filler. Mm -hmm. Well, the pot filler is going to cost you a couple, probably a thousand dollars or something. It like was that. expensive because you have to. Yeah, you have to send the plumbing up there. Yes, 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 and, and it has to look good because it's now the thing that's behind your stove. I mean, I guess we can all be relieved because it, it replaced the murals of Tuscany tile that were back there. It came kind of on, oh the, my. on the heels of that departure. But then oh you my. had this big thing that kind of looks almost like something from the dentist, like that pulls out and goes back into the wall. Like, I, no, I, I don't I don't need that. And I mean, I am st pretty strong, but I mean, how strong do you have to be to fill up a pot of water and carry it? If you've got a good triangle, you're not going too far, right? And carry it over. I mean, you're not oh, Mama Leone. You're not making pasta for 20 people. So I, I mean, I'm, I don't think it's the right choice. Can you get that drift? <laughs> but if you really I want think... a pot filler, God bless you. You are much more opinionated about this than I thought you were going to be. <laughs> I know, really? I, I have a lot of opinions about things, but I was very strong about the pot filler. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Yeah. So I think that's silly. I don't, I wouldn't put my money into that. Where I would put my money is I would save, think about, think about all the money you just saved. If you decide no pot filler, you mm -hmm. can get, yeah. kind of do True. that cr creative math, that creative budgeting in your head and be like, oh, I, I didn't get a pot filler. So I saved a couple of grand. So let me put that into my real faucet. That's on my beautiful sink. Depending on your style, of course, but I feel that almost Every kitchen could have some type of bridge faucet, and I just do love a bridge faucet. Oh, and that I have might one, be the right I, choice. <laughs> I love mine. I love it, love it, love it. Right. So do something really nice there instead of a pot filler. And you want to think about the things, you know, obviously we're not going to get into finishes and everything today because this would be a four hour podcast. But what I do want to just say quickly is think about not only the style of your faucet, but think about what has to be there. I made a bad decision once in a kitchen that I put in and I said, I don't need a sprayer. I'll just move the faucet around. Boy, did I miss my sprayer. <laughs> so if you're a sprayer person, make sure you have room, you know, depending on how big your sink is, right? You're going to have just so much space for 
the faucet and if you do bridge you know they're pretty big and they take up a lot of real estate there then you maybe want to have your sprayer think about maybe an insta hot uh so it has insta hot water and mm -hmm. cool filtered water all in one love mine you make a cup of tea quickie quicks and then some places including my state of california require I did that in air quotes, require you to have something called an air gap to pass your inspection. Now you didn't hear it here, but you can make, have them make the hole for the air gap and then fill it with your sprayer after you pass inspection. Okay. So those are some things that to think about as what you have to have or would want to have along there with your faucet by your sink. So you want to make the right choices there. Think about what uh, works for you and what you might need for permitting purposes. And mention your outlet suggestion. Oh, yeah, yeah. So let's do a little lighting. If you've been with us for a while, you know this. So I'm just going to quickly go over it and I can link to the posts on my blog where I go in depth about it. But if you're doing your backsplash and it's beautiful and it's simple or it's your countertop, you don't want to interrupt it every so many feet as per electrical code for an outlet. You want to use a plug mode under your cabinetry. It just hugs under there. You can plug all your um, countertop appliances up in there, the toaster, the blender, whatever you want, your phone charger, your cute little lamp that you've got tucked in the corner can all plug in up there. And then if you want to do under cabinetry lighting, then you can also just run that right in front of the plug mold and it solves the problem of those ugly outlets. I am definitely doing that next time. I do have my outlets in the backsplash, but I went low and sideways, but your idea is much better. So I'm definitely doing that next time. I think that's a great idea. Awesome. And obviously everything on dimmers. This room is a room that you live in and it just happens to be a room that you cook in. This is not a purely utilitarian room. So you're going to want to treat it just like you treat every other room. So definitely have multiple sources of lights and have them all. Well, and, and so true what you're saying. I mean, in, in our house, it's one big open area. So the kitchen and the living room are really the same room. So it's not just a saying, oh, you're living in there. I mean, it really is where we're living. Yeah, yeah, it really is. So you don't want, you want it to be as nice as possible. And I think what you said also, I mean, we, the under counter lights, I think are a fabulous idea, especially when you come down to the kitchen in the morning and you're not fully awake. It's a nice thing to put that light on and not to turn on the big bright lights. <laughs> especially if you did a mirrored backsplash. <laughs> Yikes! <laughs> I'd have to come down fully prepped for the day every day. That would be exhausting. Okay. Oh my goodness. One more thing I wanted to sneak in before we go on to our DTT defines and crushes is the hood. I did a really in depth post on hoods and I will link it in our show notes. But a hood is something that I don't think unless you're spending a whole lot of money for it and it is the most beautiful work of art that you really want to make it a focal point. So if you want to put a lot of budget into it and it's this gorgeous piece of art, then go for it. And if you have the kitchen that can handle such a big hood, but otherwise I would just integrate it. That would be mm -hmm. my thought on what the right choice would be in that situation. But you have to make sure that your BTUs of your, your range or your stove match the capacity of your hood. And that's what's all in that post that I am talking about and that I will link in the show notes. Yeah, and I agree with you. I mean, unless you have a really spectacular uh, bent hood, you do want it just to kind of blend. So I would just make it part of the cabinetry. And I've seen a lot of simple things um, where it, you barely even notice it. So I think that's a, that's a great idea. Yeah, so we hope that we helped you make all the right choices for your kitchen renovation or a kitchen creation today. And now, Anita, what is our DTT Defines? Well, since we're in the kitchen, I thought our DTT Defines should stay in the kitchen. So today we're defining plinth. That's P-L-I-N-T-H. That is also known as the kick plate. So that's the panel underneath your cupboards 
uh, and it's recessed to provide a place for your toes while you're working on the countertop so that you can stand right next to the countertop. Wow. I never heard of that. I don't <laughs> think. That's awesome. Imagine if you have your cabinet guy and you just tossing that around. They'll be like, okay, this person knows what they're talking about. Good job. That's a good one. Inevitably, with the new year come wellness goals. One very effective and easy to reach goal is to add dose to your wellness regime. Dose is expertly formulated organic wellness shots that support your liver in one delicious drink. Formulated with ingredients clinically shown to support liver health, potent turmeric, milk thistle, and ginger. There's zero sugar and zero calories. Did you know that your liver performs over 500 special functions? Since I learned all that my liver is doing, I started with Dose to support all those vital functions. I take a shot of refreshing Dose two times per week to combat everyday toxins from food, meds, alcohol, and unhealthy air. Since starting with Dose about a month ago, I am definitely feeling an overall improvement in my health. So if you want to give Dose a shot and invest in your health like I have, Dose is offering DTT listeners 15% off your first order, plus an additional 15% off if you subscribe for a monthly delivery. That's 30% off your first order. So go to dosedaily.com co slash dtt and use the code dtt that's dose daily dot co dot co slash dtt and use the code dtt pesto pork chops over parmesan polenta not that easy to say but oh so easy to make with green chef Green Chef is the number one meal kit company for eating well, and we have such a great deal for you. You're going to save $250. Listen on for the details on that. Green Chef makes eating well easy for any lifestyle, whether you're keto, paleo, vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free, or just looking to eat more balanced meals. You know, we're getting into the busy holiday season, so it's a perfect time to have Green Chef help you out. Let Green Chef take the work out of eating clean this holiday season with their chef-crafted, nutritionist-approved recipes featuring fresh ingredients and nothing artificial. And you know what? You don't have to lose track of your healthy eating habits during the holidays. Every Green Chef customer gets a free, that's right, a free session with their registered dietitians who will walk you through how to make clean eating work for you. So sign up for your free session and start on the road towards better health today. And the deal I want to tell you about, visit greenchef.com slash DTT250 and use the code DTT250 for $250 off your order. So that's greenchef.com slash DTT250 and use the code DTT250 for $250 off your order. My crush is a podcast, a particular podcast episode, but I would recommend this entire podcast to everyone. This is love. And the woman is Phoebe Judge, and she could read me my Trader Joe's receipt, and I would be at rapt attention and enjoying every word. She has an amazing voice. And This is Love isn't all about human love. It's about all different kinds of love and just such unique stories that really will warm your heart and sort of make you forget about a lot of things that are going on in the, in the bigger world these days. So this particular episode I listened to, then I had my daughter listen to it with me and she was alternately smiling and, and like tearing up. And then I made my mom listen to it and she loved it. So I think you'll all love it. It's um, This Is Love is the podcast and the particular episode is number nine and it's one in a million. Oh, you went way back. I love when I find a podcast that I like, I start from the beginning. Oh, oh, I found it here. Okay. I'm going to have to listen to it. Okay. So it's, it, you'll be, I, I should just say, it's about snails, but oh, it's also <laughs> sort of a a love story. Okay, well, in not a weird way. <laughs> okay, you said animal love, and I thought I don't even know what this is. <laughs> <laughs> All right, my crush is the is a book, Provence style decorating with French country flair by Shauna Varvel. 
and the book features her 18th century Rhone Valley farmhouse. Mm. It's a very large book. It's mostly pictures, which I love. Yummy! And they are beautiful, beautiful photos. Lots of the interior, lots of the exterior, and I am going to go look at it again this afternoon. It was so beautiful, and this is the kind of book you just want to sit and it's so relaxing and so enjoyable to read it. I Actually, I haven't even read it yet. I've just had time to look at the pictures. Eventually, I'll read it, but I'm just enjoying looking at the pictures. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. And remember, we're here to inspire you to create a beautiful home. Until next time. Want to talk to us? Well, we really want to talk to you. So let's schedule a design consult. And Nita and I are here to give you individualized, actionable advice on how to create the beautiful home you want and deserve. It's so easy to schedule a design consult with us. Simply click the link in the show notes or head to decoratingtipsandtricks.com slash consult. When we talk to you on the scheduled time, we will be ready with so many great tips, advice, and yes, tricks. So sign up today for a design consult. We can't wait to talk to you.